pairing the image of a sundial with a train, I think is a good way to lead into this topic. Today we would need to potentially make several corrections to correlate the sundial with clock time. This video looks at two of those corrections, our position within the time zone and daylight saving time. Longitude is how we measure our east-west position on the Earth. Every degree of longitude equals four minutes of time. 15 degrees will equal an hour, and 24 hours will complete the 360 degree circle around the Earth. Latitude is the measure of our north-south position. An accurate sundial is designed and positioned to be latitude specific. We could use this sundial anywhere around the globe at its latitude to read solar time, also called local apparent time. This worked well until the late 1800s. I like this classic approach to sundial use and design. Using New Boston, for example, assuming that the sun is aligned with the town's meridian, that would make it noon here. A sundial located a few miles east in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, will read 1204 because the sun passed that meridian about four minutes ago. Looking west, it will be another three minutes before the noon sun is aligned in Keene, so it would be 11.57 there. Though these towns are close together, they each have their own time, local apparent time. And this is where the railroad comes in. Trains and the telegraph were linking our world, and using multiple local times was becoming inconvenient and confusing. You could miss your train at the station, juggling your local time and the one that the railway might be referencing. This time comparison table predates standard time. Looking at a few New Hampshire cities near Boston, we can see that they are all a few minutes apart. It was the railroads who advocated for the adoption of a more standardized measure of time. Railway representatives met in 1883 and later that year implemented four time zones across Canada and the U.S. That system was used increasingly by commerce and the public and was commonly called railway time. It was eventually adopted by Congress in 1918 with the Standard Time Act, which included daylight saving time. This is an idealized version of those first time zones in the U.S. where each 15 degree, one hour segment of longitude would be a time zone. Today, these four time zones were pushed and pulled for economic and political boundaries. This complicates the time offset with sundials as some time zones get very wide. The solar time at the center of a time zone, 75 degrees in this example, is the basis of time across the full width of the time zone. It's like having a sundial at the time zone's meridian. When the sun is over the meridian of New Boston at 71.7 .7 degrees, it is 12 o'clock local apparent time. But at the 75 degree reference meridian, it is 13 minutes earlier. To determine that value, we use the difference between the time zone's meridian, 75 degrees, and the longitude of our position, 71.7 .7 degrees, that is 3.3 .3 degrees, multiplied by 4 minutes per degree, equals 13.2 minutes. If our sundial is located east of the time zone's meridian, we need to subtract that value from the sundial reading, since our position is early compared to the time zones at 75 degrees. When the sun is coincident with the time zone's meridian, then it is noon across the entire time zone, though it may be 12.30 local apparent time on the eastern edge and 11.30 local apparent time at the western edge. Looking at Buffalo, New York, when the sun is directly overhead there, it is noon local apparent time, but it is 12.15 at 75 degrees. So if we're located west of the time zone's meridian, we need to add that value of longitude, about 15 minutes here to match the time zone. To summarize, the rule for standard time conversion is, if you are east of the time zone's meridian, subtract the value for the longitude. West of the meridian, 
add it. After longitude, daylight saving time is yet another complication when using sundials. For most of the year in the U.S., from the first Sunday in March to the first Sunday in November, we need to add an hour to the sundial reading. About 40% of the world still uses some form of daylight saving time, but that is declining. Its rationale was to give people a sense of more daylight in the evening and to potentially save energy, but increasingly its benefit is being questioned and may eventually disappear. The third time correction that we need is a value from the equation of time. I'll try to explain that in the next video. But right now, I've got a train to catch. Until next time...